Previously at Carrington House, in this super small hallway, we've seen ceilings go down, we've seen walls get rebuilt and prepped for beautiful large format tiles. And if you missed that, click the link above to head back and see part one of this hallway space. But now it is time to get these slab tiles on the walls. Are you fondling the tiles, George? I was just feeling it. <laughs> tiny space there are still as many things to do in here as there is any other room it's just a smaller volume and a smaller workload now that we have the large format tiles on we need to now look at cornices chair rails skirts picture rails lighting you name it it still all needs to happen in this room next step will be the first building team back in chair rails skirts pitch rails and then it'll be the jip rockers back in to hang that cornice. As with all renovations, there are challenges and there are areas that we need to adapt in. Now, usually we'd be fitting our chair rail to a flat wall. But in this circumstance, because we have used the large format slab tiles, we actually have an area that we're going to either need to build out or rebate into. Now the good news is that being real timber, the interim chair rails are easy to work with. And in this circumstance, due to the depth of the lip that's on the top of that tile, Regan is having to come up with the goods and actually add on to the back of the trim to make that chair rail extra deep, but to fit seamlessly on top of the slab tile. The next challenge I have for Regan from Team Ferris is how to manage the threshold between the hallway and the living room. We need to figure out how we're going to make the transition between wallpaper and tile and at the same time what that means for the skirting boards, the chair rails and the picture rails that go out and around whatever we decide to create here. I guess if we think about the purpose of it, it's to break the two rooms. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the skirt needs to go around it. Mm -hmm. Might make it more of a sort of a break if they step out around it, you'll, you'll notice it more. I feel that if we don't step it out, it'll look like we ran out of trim, which we haven't, mm -hmm. and we're just putting a sticky bit. Whereas if we go out and around it, it might actually look more architectural. Yeah. And that... those grooves will be between the chair rail and Exactly. The... So if they were between chair and picture and they kind of stopped this far from yeah, each end. 150 from top and bottom. Yeah. Because yeah. well, that would be 900, 270. So that's 16. So they'd be like, yeah. Okay. I think Fair we have around. to come out and around. Yep. No, that's fine. Are you cool with that? Yeah, that's fine. No, okay, cool. just a question. Good question. It doesn't affect me. I just 
yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this way because I think I know that's one of those angles where that kimbers are gonna run. Yeah, totally. So I can just put a line up and start one square from that back. Cool, thank you. Hey Regan, I think you're awesome. I'm trying my best. It's just I... not exactly how I wanted it. I think you're awesome. Now it's time to make this place start to look pretty. The plasterers are in to hang the corners and Dan from Newey Paint Crew is coming in to paint. Now many of you be thinking, oh, hardly anything to do here. But I tell you, painting a really skinny, tall space is really tough, especially when you're six foot four yourself. The room is finally done. It is tiny, but I have packed a mite of detail into here to show you. My favorite part in this room would without doubt be this super glamorous and super practical slab, so large format tiles from Beaumont Tiles. The gloss white onyx means that they're hard wearing, easy to clean, and they bring such beautiful movement to the room. The most challenging part of this room, without doubt, was working out how to break this really long wall because there was a long wall that went from the hall to the living room and we had some issues with how even and uneven the wall was and so I had to get the team from Ferris Building to reinstall, recreate, re-engineer the idea of a threshold at the end of the hallway that served a practical purpose of cutting this really long wall, gave an entryway into the living space and also hid some, you know, little quirky parts of this house. Okay, what would I change? Well, at the moment, I am going to sit tight on this and be really open with you. I may want to change the internal colour of that beautiful front door. So I'm not saying just yet that I want to, but there is the possibility that it may get a recoat. And you know what? That is one of the best things about paint, is you can paint, paint, and paint again until you absolutely love it. This tiny hallway is a wrap, packed with lots of details, trims, cornices, skirts, picture rails, chair rails, you name it, we have packed it into here. But I have a big project coming and that is the front facade. It is not going to be an easy one with trees and tree roots and asbestos and falling down awnings, but I'm up for the challenge. For watching this episode of my 1880s house restoration. If you'd like to know more about Carrington House, see other rooms we've done or will be doing, check out the products that we've used, our trade and supplier team, as well as get all the behind the scenes footage and all the specifications, colors and finishes I've chosen for every space 
then head on over to my website, naomifindlay.com forward slash Carrington House and everything you need will be right there.